and I'm an educator innovation lead on Team Flipgrid, and I am so excited to welcome you to this conversation. We have three incredible guests today to talk about a very special book called The Dot, and we're going to welcome them to share their insights, their ideas, and some ways that you can get set to help your community make their mark and celebrate International Dot Day. I'm ready right away to welcome my guests. So first up, let's go ahead and welcome our good friend, teacher librarian, author, educator, mover and shaker, Shannon Miller. Hello, Shannon. Hi, my friend. It's so How are you? Here. I'm great. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad to have you here. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a teacher librarian in Van Meter, Iowa, and I also serve as the Future Ready Librarian spokesperson working with the Alliance. And I'm lucky because I get to work with great people like you and publishers and authors. And I get to talk about one of my favorite days, Dot Day Today. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so excited to have you add your voice to this conversation. I'm going to go ahead and welcome some of our other guests and we'll bring you right back in just a moment. Awesome. So friends, next up, we have a vocal music teacher, a kid lit TV contributor. He's a celebrity dot curator and founder of International Dot Day, Terry Shea. Terry, welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, we're so excited to have you. Terry, like this whole dot day was your idea in the first place based on this incredible book. I can't wait to have you share some insights later, but could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a K through 12 vocal music teacher in a tiny little school uh, called North Tama in Terrier, Iowa. Uh, and dot day started at my school and with some social media friends and has traveled around the world. So cool, so cool. Well, Terry, I am so excited to have you share your ideas and help new community friends learn how to help get set for Dot Day. I'm gonna go ahead and pop you off of the screen for a minute and we'll bring you back in just a moment. Friends, we have one more incredible guest we would like to introduce the man who started it all. He is a bookshop owner, the founder of Fable Vision, a beloved author and illustrator, the guy who shared the dot with the world, Peter H. Reynolds. Peter, welcome. I am so happy to connect the dots with you, Anne, and all of our friends out there. This is so exciting. This is one of my all-time favorite days uh, of the year. And um, it's just great, too, that you brought together two of my favorite educators on the planet uh, who, you know, took this book about a little girl who was afraid to, to draw, afraid to make her mark. And a great teacher inspired her to be brave and to share her, her creativity, her color, her, uh, her voice with the world. And that's really what this, this day is about. And uh, great educators like Shannon and Terry really know how to activate the book. And wow, did they ever activate this book? I am, I'm in <laughs> awe at what has happened since uh, the very first dot day and all of the creativity around the world. I love seeing all the posts, all the creativity, the, the banners, the art, the projects. It's, it's really amazing. I'm very honored. Oh my gosh. Well, it's an honor to have you join us for this conversation. Let's go ahead and add Shannon and Terry back. And friends, I want to start off this conversation. The one dot that connected the world. Peter, if I know the story right, I saw a video that says you fell asleep with a marker in your hand. <laughs> I'm curious, maybe you could share a little bit about how this beloved story about a dot came to be. Yeah, that, that is a true story. I, I had my Sharpie marker in hand. And what I try to do is before I go to sleep at night, I try to jot something down. And sometimes it, because I, I, can, I, I love to draw and I like to write. Sometimes it's, it's a poem. Sometimes it's a doodle. Sometimes it's a whole story that uh, spills out. Like my book, The North Star came to me at midnight one night and I I just jotted it all down. Um, 
but some nights I'm really tired. Like this one particular night, I was so exhausted that I had just enough energy to pull the cap off my pen and I put my pen to paper and I fell asleep. And of course, uh, when I woke up, I'm guessing about an hour later, based on the amount of ink that had been released from the pen. And so I, I threw my journal to one side, I went to sleep. And when I woke up in the morning, there was light shining through the window and it fell upon my journal and there it was, there was a dot. And I, I looked at it in the, you know, in the light of the morning and I thought, that's actually a pretty cool looking dot. And I picked up my pen and I wrote The Dot by Peter Eternals. And that really was my touchstone um, for creating the book uh, that we're celebrating today. Oh my gosh, how fascinating, but also what a great example that you can look at anything with a creative mindset and see possibility, transformative possibility too. I love that. And I, I feel so lucky that we have this inside like peek into the process of how an accident created this incredible movement to celebrate creativity. Yeah, it, it, it's, it is a good lesson for all of us just to be reminded that our mistakes might actually be our best ideas ever. So, you know, love all your marks, all your ideas, jot them down, doodle away, and then sift through it and you'll be inspired by what you, what the marks of you have left behind. I love that. Oh my gosh. And Terry, speaking of being inspired by the marks that were left behind, you saw this book, using it in your community and have this idea this incredible story about potential and possibility and you said i'm gonna i'm gonna create this thing called dot day and it's become international dot day i'd love to know the story of how that got started well the uh the honest truth is i found the book in 2006 and found peter uh thanks to our mutual friend billy um i learned of peter and the excellent work he does we met I bought the book, The Dot, and it, it moved me so. Uh, at the time, I was teaching college classes, and I made everyone read the book because I think every teacher needs to read The Dot. I think it's that important. I think it's, it's like a mentor text, like this is who we all should be. In 2009, uh, Peter and I were messaging back and forth, and I said, you know what I think would be really cool is if we had a date day where we, in school, we stopped focusing on tests and, and, you know, science scores and math scores, and we just let the kids make dots because everybody can make a dot. So that was in early September. Um, I was newer to Twitter, and I just messaged out, there's going to be a day called uh, The Dot Day. And uh, Peter actually made a logo and called it International Dot Day, um, and brilliantly said September 15th-ish, uh, which I wouldn't have thought of, but September 15th was when the book was published. And I, I always tell people when I tell them the story, if you're gonna tell somebody your idea, tell it to somebody who's gonna throw gas on it. <laughs> so making a logo, calling it International Dot Day, is throwing gas. And uh, as soon as people heard about it, it, it went crazy. And then uh, I will always uh, strongly attribute into the, uh, 2011, Shannon and John Shu uh, took up the banner, so to speak, and made it uh, just go crazy. The first year we kept track, we had 18,000 people. And that was, I couldn't even imagine that. And the second year, uh, it was something like 800,000. So it's something that teachers believe in. Um, and the, the, the thing that makes it super special is that everybody makes it their own. Um, they're, they're, there's not a prescribed, you have to do this or that. Uh, I remember Shannon's first year, they covered an exercise ball in paper and rolled it around the school for all the kids to, to make it that. You remember, Shannon? Um, and I thought, I never would have thought of that. And it's brilliant. And that's that's how Dot Day is what it is. 
Uh, I might have had a little tiny idea, but people like Shannon and and John and and librarians and teachers everywhere have made it this amazing, amazing thing. Oh my gosh. Well, I've got the ticker up there. We're all getting ready to celebrate International Dot Day, and that's coming up this year. It falls on September 15th, and not ish. It is September 15th this year. But I love that and the idea that one idea and whether it was an accident or a mistake and you can take it and spin it and create it. And Terry, it's just so incredible to hear how that celebration of creativity in your community has rippled around the world in the most incredible way. And that example from Shannon School, I've had the privilege of getting to visit Shannon School before. And Shannon, friend, you know, you are my go to expert for all things reading and celebrating literacy and community and creativity and empowering. And I'm so curious, what does Dot Day look like in your community? We just heard that really cool example, rolling a ball throughout the community. But what, what, what else could it look like or does it look like in your community? Well, it's always the best way to kick off the year. You know, when you're starting back to school and we start in a couple of weeks, it doesn't just start on September 15th. It is like our model from the very beginning and it carries us through the entire year. And for me, like the most important thing to me is the voice that our kids have. And I'm lucky because I work in a school, small Iowa school, just like Terry. And it's great because we have preschool to 12th grade in our school. And so it carries throughout. It doesn't matter if, you know, the activity, the one that like Terry shared when we had the exercise ball and we covered it and everybody signed it. And we even had pictures of our bus drivers and our superintendent and our older and little kids. And I think the big thing is not only that community that we have that is now international, but that community that you can start with within your own school and just building on that. And, and that is such a big thing. And my son now is a junior and my other two kids, you know, have been students too at Van Meter and kids remember that. Like our kids who we have, you know, kids that we had that are now teachers at Van Meter who remember Dot Day. We have, you know, kids that now have their own kids that come back and the kids talk about that. And I think if we can always just have that in our heads, if we're a teacher, if we're a family member, and especially our kids, just to make your mark, like that is a huge thing. And that that is definitely for empowering, you know, not only our kids' voice, but all of us too. Oh my gosh, I love that. And I just have to take a moment to, to share. Peter, I actually have a memory of meeting you at ISTE. I think it was in 2014. And at the Fable Vision booth, you were passing out little wooden circles oh, yeah. that don't, do you remember? I mean, I know you remember those, but I kept that on my desk for years. And the inspiration, I mean, I had my, I, I'm having a fangirl moment right now, truth be told, to be able to talk to all three of you. But getting to meet you and, and this book in my classroom with my students and in my real life with the people and the young people, especially that I know, my three year old niece who is incredibly creative, but with my first grade students, I have so many memories of students getting frustrated saying, I can't, I, I can't, I can't draw that, I can't do that. And I said, there's no way you can mess this up. We're constantly growing and you can turn this into anything. And we would use this example of a dot and one mark and celebrating that one tiny mark. And I do also encourage people, sign your name, just like Vashti did in the story with her teacher saying, sign your name, just like you did with that, with that marker that spread and created your first dot. And so I think this message is so empowering. And Terry, as you said, and Shannon and, and Peter, I'd just love some insight on, on the way you've seen this and, and helping folks come into the mindset of empowering creativity. And so I, I would just love to hear from anything, anything about as we get set and help folks prepare for International Dot Day this year, what are some yeah. insights you can share as folks are leading up? 
I'll just I'll just say a reminder that um, international.day.org is the website that if you're uh, looking to connect the dots, also to let us know, you can register there um, to let us know, uh, you know, not only that you're celebrating, but who you're celebrating with and how many and, and where you are in the world. It's really wonderful to see so many people from around the world, all these countries, 194 countries, the last time I checked. Um, and on that site, you will find all sorts of resources and ideas. It can be as simple as, you know, literally just make a dot, sign it, maybe make a frame, create a gallery, and then see what happens from there. But there have been so many amazing ideas, including I think one of the, the most startling uh, images I saw, I think Terry, um, your school may have been one of the first that I saw where you went out onto the, the sports field and you just put all the kids together and someone took a, a shot, I don't know if it was a drone uh, that took that shot, but there was just this big, huge human dot and that just just warmed my heart to see everyone come together as one human dot. We've actually done it a couple different ways. The former elementary principal standing on the scoreboard uh, with just the elementary. And then the last time we did it, we did K-12 on the football field and then drone shot it. And a, a lot of people, when we were going to do that, were like, are you kidding? You're going to take 550 kids out. They were awesome. There was not one problem. Everybody knew what to do, went out, took this beautiful picture. It was the 10th celebration that we did that. Uh, just amazing. It's, and it is to, for everybody is part of that. Everybody is part of that day at my school because, I mean, we've just done it for years and it's just part of who we are. And, and, I'm gonna go back, just one little thing about the ish. Uh, I take ish very, very, very liberally. If you wanna celebrate in May, I'm good with that. Um, in fact, Shannon got to see, we did a billboard actually in town, uh, one of the big billboards that had all of the kids dots all around it. And we made those dots in May. So September ish. Do it whenever you want. Yeah, I love that. To go. that was so cool. I also think too, Terry, just kind of an adjacent thought to that. Ish is all about growth mindset, right? And as we're preparing for this global day of celebration, the reminder that this is a lifelong journey. We're all lifelong learners. And as educators and friends of EDU and authors and folks who are all about celebrating and empowering others, that's a beautiful reminder. The story of Ish, the book, the continuing idea of it can be, and timelines are flexible, right? Because it's a learning journey and that's a lifelong adventure. Thank you, Terry, for that reminder. Shannon, I'm going to pop this up onto the onto the screen. I know you have some incredible resources and I um, I know I don't have this in presenter mode, but I want to click through a few of these bit.ly slash dot day fun. Shannon, could you walk us through what you have and the resources you have available for others? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, kicking it off, we start school on the 23rd of August. And so I've been busy putting things together and it's great because like the choice board for let's celebrate dot day is something that anybody can use, you know, listening to the story, if it's finding it um, on Epic, there's lots of great things on KidLit TV, of course, um, our friend Emily Arrow. And it's just great to see like and give people examples, but also to give our kids choice in how they want to celebrate, too. And so the big thing that we always do, you know, being an artist myself and being an educator and a librarian is making with our hands. And we want to give, you know, kids those opportunities through anything that we're doing. If it's, we're already making plans, you know, we have our sidewalk chalk ready, we have our, you know, paints ready, we have our coffee filters ready, like all kinds of ways that we're gonna be celebrating. But then to give these resources, if it's to your teachers, if it's sending at home with maybe kids who are still learning remotely, like however they want to use it. The next thing is, this is new this year, we're adding a huge STEAM program to our school and a lot of schools are, 
focusing around STEAM now. And these are all things not necessarily to do online, but just activities. If it's science, if it's engineering, of course, lots of art and tying them, them that way. And then the next thing is just a collection full of ideas, things that we've done, but other you know teachers and librarians and even things that were in those choice boards, you can find it in this um, Destiny collection too. And then the last thing, this is so exciting. Last year, our friends at Stick Together took my students' artwork and actually made this amazing poster. And they're offering it this year, but then they're going to have a contest to collect different dots. And it's called Dot Dot um, and do some virtual ones too. I think it's just so great to see how many different people and places like have picked this up and truly just, you know, use it as a way for kids and for teachers and librarians to make their mark. And so just lots of good ideas. And all these things are for everyone to use too. So you can get to them at that bit.ly. Oh my gosh, and I want to pop that on the screen again, everybody. This is the, the website you can use, bit.ly slash dot day fun. Shannon, thank you for sharing that. It's like a, a jackpot of incredible resources, tons of ideas to empower across your community. And I want to share another resource. Um, here we are inside Flipgrid, right? And now that this is centered on the screen, inside of Flipgrid, you can access the discovery library simply by clicking on that button that says discovery. And we are absolutely thrilled to get to celebrate with our partner, Candlewick Press. And Peter, this is the publisher of the books. And within this discovery library page, one of the featured collections has your name on it, Peter H. Reynolds. And when we click into this, there are incredible resources. And I want to click on this Create Trilogy Challenge and wonder if you could just speak to this for a moment and share what it is um, in this video, this call to action that you share with folks. I am... I... <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it was actually. Well, remember. I'll give you a hint. You're just talking about the dot ish and sky color, but it is the challenge that you share to make your mark on the world. So, um, yeah, I mean, anything, anything you'd like to share about the call to make your mark on the world? Um, you know, ultimately, this is really about honoring every voice teacher and student that the things that are going on in your head your heart your mind those are amazing and beautiful and we need to we need to know uh what what you're thinking and dreaming and i created the create trilogy right there the three books the dot ish and sky color those are the three books they're like puzzle pieces that snap together dot is about just getting started right and ish is how do I continue? How do I get brave and find my voice, my particular style of doing something? And then Sky Color reminds us that, you know what, that learning journey never, it never ends. And so my, my challenge to everybody is, you know, how will you make your mark? You know, a lot of times we focus on the art of uh, theme of the dot, but it really is, how can I use my time, my talent, my energy, my passion to make the world a better place and what's lovely about dot day is you can work with kindergarten kids preschool but you can also work with uh, high school and college age kids and people in the community and really think about what does that mean to make your mark it you know this is a metaphor right the dot that really is the metaphor is start somewhere you know how can we how can we make sure that everybody has enough food to eat how do we uh, have more trees in the world and it starts with an idea in your head you write it down, but the most important thing is to share it and find kindred spirits who believe the same um, same thing that you do, um, or maybe you can convince them with your with your uh, art and your creativity that this is a really important idea and that we should connect the dots and move this world to a better place. Oh my gosh, I love that. Well, we're so thankful that you're making these resources available, and and Candlewick Press is a, a you know a beloved 
Discovery Library partner. There are incredible resources, friends. And when you go inside of Discovery, all you have to do is click on the partners, find that Candlewick Press page, and then right here, this collections featuring these resources and videos where you can hear right from Peter. But Peter, there's another opportunity coming up where folks are going to get to connect with you. We are celebrating International Dot Day. Terry, this idea that you launched into the world, we are so excited to welcome you this year, Peter, for a Flipgrid Live event. And I just wanted to make sure everybody knows how to find out how they can they can get connected with you. I'm gonna pop this ticker up. Um, if they head to aka.ms slash dot day, this is live with you. And I was wondering if you could give us a maybe a sneak peek about anything you might be doing on this event. Sure. Well, I'm super honored, you know, that Microsoft and Flipgrid got uh, uh, behind this wonderful global celebration and uh, be, just been amazing partners. And, the, you know, we, we put our heads together and said, hey, do you know what? Um, all, these celebration, uh, all these celebrations are happening all around the planet, but wouldn't it be great to just uh, all come together and that I could be live with everybody and, you know, connect out and hear from everybody uh, around the planet and so, yeah, we we put this event together. We've got some fun surprises in store. I've got some stories to tell, and I'm also going to be making some art and inviting people to make make art with me. And um, so, yeah, lots lots of really cool stuff happening. And that is actually uh, September fifteenth. We say September fifteenth ish, but this event is actually on the day. Which, by the way, September fifteenth is the day that the, the book was published. So if you look inside the dot, it says publication date, September 15th, 2003. So that is why it's September 15th. So it's kind of the birthday of the dot, which is Terry's kids, uh, I, from my memory, Terry, I think your kids may have uh, used that terminology, the, uh, the birthday, of the, is it the birthday of the book? And I think that's kind of cool. It, it, in a way, it is the birthday of the book and what better, uh, way to celebrate than to have a dot party. Oh my gosh. And a dot party, friends. A dot party is coming. Some other device on my dad's desk over in the basement is ringing. So that's real life. We are recording this live, friends. And I don't know how to turn that off. So maybe we'll just edit this part out. But I, I love it. It's ishy. It's very ish, right? And that's the Right. It doesn't have to be perfect. It, you know, perfect ish. That, that kind of works for, for me. And can I just say actually thank you? Because that just totally calmed me down by just simply saying perfect ish. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be perfect. That's the power of creativity and that's the power of this journey. And I can't even begin to thank you three enough. Shannon, Terry, and Peter for, for joining us for this conversation. Friends, we're getting ready for this international party. International Dot Day, that is the official hashtag, correct? That is, that is correct, yes. There are awesome. variations on the theme, but that, that one's a pretty good one, International <laughs> Dot Day. Some people throw the year on there too, so that they can, you know, we can find out what people did back in, you know, 2019 or, um, but that, that'll work. Terry, that was like a magic trick, just unraveling that scroll right in the camera. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, yeah. friends. Well, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and I'll open it up to any last words of encouragement or inspiration as folks around the world get set for International Dot Day and get ready to empower others to make their mark. Anybody have any closing thoughts they'd like to share? I mean, I'll jump in and just remind everybody listening that this celebration is not just for kids, it's for all ages. And in fact, I think it, that if all the adults listening make their dot and sign it, and, and please don't uh, denigrate your artwork because I find that sometimes adults slip into that. They'll say, oh, I can't draw a straight line with her, or it's terrible. I'm thinking, your kids are sponges and you're their hero and you're, you're giving them the vocabulary to defeat their own voice, right? So 
if you could just be brave, on, especially on this day, make a dot, sign it, be proud of it, put it up, you know, frame it, uh, put it on the fridge. Uh, your kids will be inspired by your bravery, right? If we want our kids to be brave, we have to show them what it looks like. If we want them to be creative, we have to show them what it looks like. And uh, creativity really requires bravery. Right? That blank page can be a little scary, but it doesn't need to be, right? Think of it like a swimming pool, right? When I see a swimming pool, I want to jump in. So when you think of a, a sheet of paper or a screen, dive in. It's fun. That's fantastic advice. Thank you. Shannon, Terry, any words of encouragement as folks get set? Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, remind everybody to make your mark and celebrate in any way you can, like big or little and and everything is great, you know, regardless of what you do around this day. And so thank you to um, Peter and Terry, too, for just giving us this really special day. Thank and you. I'm going to say, follow the hashtag International Dot Day and watch what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Follow people like Shannon, who are amazing advocates uh who tireless like who are tireless advocates and see what people are doing and i've been actually watching the counter go uh people signing up and it, it's absolutely amazing that yesterday there were two people sign up two two participants and there were also 1200 so there are no right numbers there uh, one of my former students has a daycare. They celebrate Dot Day. Sometimes a retirement home celebrates Dot Day. There's, it's all about creativity. And so follow the amazing people. Uh, Shannon has an, an amazing resource for connecting with other classrooms. I don't, yeah. Is that in your resources? I should have. I will share that with you, Ian, and then maybe you can include it. I should have included that in the slides because – one great thing too about Dot Day is that we've had this Google Doc probably for almost what, eight, nine years. And people, I think at the end of it last year, it was something like 170 pages. Wow. And it's just hundreds and hundreds of people all over the world connecting and making connections. And that to me is one of the most special things is like how we can share making our mark with others. If it's people in other countries, people in other schools and communities. And that's one of the best things about Dot Day is just making those connections. Right, and it's it's lovely that we can have this common vocabulary, you know, kids in Japan, kids in Argentina, kids in, in uh, the United States, that they realize that the planet's, that it's not that big, you know, that we're, we share this planet and that we can, we have something in common. And that my Dot that I made in Japan you know, is kind of similar to what I made in in the, in uh, Argentina, USA, and so I think that that especially, I just love that idea of of finding uh, finding another fel you know fellow classroom uh, school around on the other side of the world, mm -hmm. or it could be you know one town over uh, too. That that's that is wonderful too. So um, definitely encourage people to connect the dots with with people out mm -hmm. there. And it may also tie into a unit that you're doing in school. You know, if you're studying um, Egypt, hey, guess what? You'll, you can find a school in Egypt mm -hmm. to uh, to celebrate with. So um, have fun and let us know. Definitely, let us know what what you what you do, what connections you make. And I will be definitely, I'll be glued to my screen watching the uh, hashtag International Dot Day to see all the cool stuff that everyone comes up with. Oh my gosh! Well, friends. Peter, from your beautiful accident that, that was captured one day on a piece of paper to this incredible celebration of creativity and individuals around the world making their mark. Friends, thank you for joining in for this conversation. And, and Peter and Terry and Shannon, thank you for sharing your ideas and insights. Friends, we would love to celebrate International Dot Day with you on September 15th. Again, go ahead and get registered for that Flipgrid Live event. I'm gonna pop an image up on the screen as we go out, but we just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in and, and joining us for this awesome community conversation. Bye, friends. Bye. Thanks, thanks Anne. Thanks, everybody.